Hi there, Anthony Schneider here. I'm the author of Five Days to Freedom and CEO and creator of xsmokertv.com. Now, in this video, I'm going to talk to you about why your brain is not safe from nicotine. The majority of smokers really don't have a clue why they smoke. And then those same smokers really have no idea why every time they try to stop smoking, it seems to be the most difficult thing in the world for them to do. The reason why smokers smoke is because they are addicted to the world's most powerful drug. It's called nicotine. And if you are a smoker who's finding it really difficult to stop smoking, it's because you are not educated about how nicotine addiction really works. And that is the main reason why if you are a smoker, you just can't seem to stop smoking. Now here is a brief explanation about the function of nicotine and its primary target, your brain. Once a smoker educates himself or herself why they smoke and what nicotine does to them, they will be able to start the process of becoming a permanent ex-smoker. Listen up. The first part of the education you need to understand is why you smoke. This is pretty simple. If you are a smoker, you are smoking because you are addicted to a drug called nicotine. Actually, if you are a smoker, you are caught within a beautifully designed trap. And being addicted to nicotine is very, very powerful. Stopping smoking is a challenge because what happens is that the addicted smoker is constantly fighting against a brain that is neurologically possessed by the chemicals, toxins and nicotine found in cigarettes. When a smoker inhales the smoke from a cigarette, it takes just a few moments to reach the brain and immediately the ingredients of the cigarette get to work on making either a new nicotine addict or keeping the smoker addicted. The tobacco companies are really smart because what they've done is they have designed the cigarette to immediately attack receptors in your brain. And these receptors in your brain immediately respond to the nicotine that the smoker or you yourself has inhaled. When these receptors are stimulated, they release chemicals that can make you feel good, make you feel like you're having a pleasurable experience. This is what I call the buzz. This is actually what happens to a professional smoker because for a person who has just started smoking, the pleasure is not as prominent because a new smoker really has to work hard to become addicted to nicotine. And that is not such a pleasurable experience. Maybe you remember what it felt like when you first started to smoke. When smokers first started to smoke, these brain receptors were minimal. But if a smoker smokes continuously for years and years, the brain receptors duplicate. And within a few months, only a few months, they have millions of receptors. And these receptors have been formed to receive more nicotine, therefore creating addiction. This is what I like to refer to as the occupation of drug monster. And if drug monster doesn't get his fix of nicotine, then drug monster gets a little annoyed. And when he gets annoyed, the smoker, and probably you too, starts to feel it. This is what you probably know as the withdrawal symptoms. Let me tell you that you don't need millions of these addicted receptors, and you definitely don't need a drug monster inside you to live like a normal human being. So what's happening now with the smoker is that not only are they disillusioned about the fact that they are going to get some kind of pleasure from the cigarette, they also don't want to feel the withdrawal symptoms because they can be really annoying to some people who smoke. But the more the smoker smokes, the more that he or she will brainwash him or herself that they are actually doing themselves a favor by having a cigarette when in actual fact all they are doing is causing the feeling that they don't want to happen to happen. Basically, the more you smoke, the more you smoke. Nicotine does many bad things to your body and it also does many extremely bad things to your nervous system and your brain too. The moment you realize that you need to buy a packet of cigarettes is a moment that your brain has changed. 
This is the moment that you have become a slave to the tobacco company, and this is the moment that you start your race to cancer, that you will probably win if you continue to smoke. Nicotine addiction keeps you on the fast lane to a smoking-related disease, but the beautiful thing is that you won't see it immediately, but you will start to see it as it creeps up eventually and bites you in the ass, leaving you the high possibility of lung or throat cancer. Willpower doesn't help you stop smoking. In fact, willpower has nothing to do with stopping smoking. The only thing that is going to make you stop smoking is actually stopping smoking. And as weeks and days and months go by, when you do stop smoking, those brain receptors I was talking about will start to diminish and they will start dying. When this happens, your brain will eventually go back to the state that it used to be in before you became addicted. I would say that the majority of smokers have no idea why, for them, it's really difficult to stop smoking. And it's because of this, they don't understand the thing about the brain receptors. And it's probably because nobody has ever really explained to the smoker why they do smoke and what the real function of nicotine really is. If you are a smoker, you really should start looking at things and realize what a huge and totally unnecessary pain in the ass nicotine addiction really is. However, a lot of smokers who haven't smoked for weeks or months haven't actually completely got rid of these dependent brain receptors and when they are faced with a situation that may remind them that during this actual situation they would normally smoke they could be like, you know, when they're out drinking alcohol or they're having moments of stress and probably like after a couple of hours of wild passionate sex the smoke is called upon by a drug monster, the addicted brain receptors, and cunningly convinced that it's okay to have just one cigarette. So the smoker smokes one cigarette, thinking that he or she is in control, but before they know it, they are back to smoking a packet of cigarettes a day. Let me shine a light on the situation. There is actually great news. Eventually, after time, the cravings, the withdrawal symptoms, that's drug monster, and the necessity to smoke, it all dies. I myself and millions of other ex-smokers are living proof of that. So there you have it, a brief explanation of what nicotine does when it gets to your brain, what its function is and why millions of smokers are mystified why they can't stop smoking. But let me tell you now that any smoker, and I mean any smoker on this planet, can stop smoking. The smoker just needs to stop poisoning the brain. You need to stop smoking, and you need to stop smoking, and when you're smoking, you're just poisoning your brain. Instead of poisoning your brain, start educating it. This video was brought to you by me, Anthony Schneider. And listen, for more great tips and advice and strategies on how to become a permanent ex-smoker, please visit xsmokertv.com. I'll see you soon in another video. Take care. And remember, it's not necessary to smoke.